Welcome to a, another commentary done by Dickity. Upper right hand corner, we have Jedi 1 starting as the green Protoss. Upper left hand corner, we have Aegis starting as the red Zerg. This is going to be on Metaverse. And this is BSL Season 14, Hasu League, Round of 16, Group B. Second match between Jedi 1 and Aegis. Jedi 1 taking a very quick victory in Game 1 over Aegis with that 2 gate. And I think that will maybe put Aegis a little bit more on his toes and might dissuade him from going for what was kind of a more greedy economic build. But doing that and not ever sending out a Zergling Scout or a Drone Scout, I'm wondering if Jedi 1 had kind of a read on Aegis or has played Aegis in the past and recognized he was going to do that or if he just wanted to go for that strategic opener to go ahead and punish it. Pylon towards the ramp, which suggests, again, we might see another gateway opener rather than forge, or at least some form of one base play. Usually if you're gonna see two base play, you're gonna see the pylon at the natural expansion. So I'm expecting another gateway opener. Ages after game one, I would expect an overpool, something along those lines, a little bit safer. Make sure you get the scouting information. This is a four player map, which makes it a little bit harder sometimes to execute two gate plays. First of all, it's a large map. Second of all, sometimes you get unlucky scouting, and it looks like this probe scout is going to get first scout. Overpool this time for Aegis. And should save Larva to go ahead and produce the Zerglings to potentially deal with this. I think Jedi 1's going to follow this up just with a 1 gate rather than a 2 gate, potentially. Although I have seen players play very strong 2 gate styles and make that their thing. And I'm wondering if Jedi 1 has maybe kind of shifted into that I, I've seen one guy who was an incredible Protoss player and actually went all the way to the finals of a tournament, and he was just a two-gate player. He went one base, two-gate, and that was his thing. Probe going to steal some minerals rather than attacking over the mineral line. Drone making its way to the natural. First sell it in production. Gas is being tacked on. It looks like it is not going to be a two-gate opener this time. Just going to be one-gate pressure. Drone making its way to the upper right-hand corner. Four Zerglings being produced, which should be plenty to go ahead and counter that. And so it's going to be first scout for Aegis as well, and I think that might have been a strategic play right there, where he was like, okay, I know this probe got into my base really, really early, which me and I don't think it was a cross-position scout. So six Zerglings being produced. A gas steal? Are you kidding me? So Jedi 1 going for a gas steal, so all sorts of shenanigans. This drone somehow getting past the Zealot is confirming the single gateway. Looks like it's going to go ahead and exit. Well, that's sad. I would have loved to see it like wander around in the base for a while. The Zerglings, that almost feels like a waste of resources. <clears throat> it does slow down the gas a little bit, I suppose. But maybe it was trying to encourage a quick third hatchery. This drone going to go ahead and return to home base. The Zealot chasing after another Zealot still holding home base. Cybernetic score roping up. So, yeah, it's going to be one Jedi 1 opting for one base play. Aegis, let's see if he adapts. He doesn't need to go for the third hatchery to counter this. Usually two hatcheries still puts you puts you actually well ahead. And this style of matchup, particularly if you can defend, if you, if you have sufficient defense, looks like three zealots now on the front. A shield battery just in case. Zerglings being wiped out, but Aegis, that shield battery is it's costly. Maybe it's just to make sure that front door is held. Another probe wandering out wants to go ahead and continue to get scouting information, but this is a waste. This is a waste of resources right here. Because Aegis is not getting aggressive behind this. Robotics facility being produced. So it looks like we're going to see one gate Corsair Reaver. Or sorry, one base Corsair Reaver. Overlord wandering in to go ahead and see things. And it's going to confirm that robotics facility. So all Aegis has to do, it looks like he's going to go for an in-base third hatchery. All Aegis has to do, it looks like he's going to go Hydro Stem. He just has to macro, macro, macro. Right now he's still sitting on 12 drones. So playing a little bit resource light. Actually, supply capped himself, it looks like. That's a hard supply cap, too, actually. Especially in this situation where you need to stay economically ahead. Zealot's been produced to go ahead. And, man, now he needs another Overlord as well. Forge being planted. But this is one of those things where I almost wish I had seen Spire and Mutalisks out of this. And instead, we're seeing it looks like two Hatch Hydra. So Overlord wiped out. Puts Aegis... Again in the red, so that Overlord that was just produced is getting him back to a supply cap. So Jedi 1 surging ahead now, off one base play. Yeah, there's a robotic support bay. Forge, I'm wondering if that's just to get plus one weapons. 
And we'll see how Jedi One plays it. Okay, another Overlord's been produced, finally. And so now Age is starting to make his way out of the supply cap. He still has the Hydro Stun. He's going to get Hydra Speed. Is he going to go for a bust? I'm wondering if this is mind games and the shield battery was just like next level. Where he's like, okay, I know that Aegis' style of play and I know he's going to go for a bust after this. So let me go ahead and preemptively put down a shield battery, a photon cannon, and play the match from there. Shuttle speed being upgraded. And actually that shield battery, especially because this is, you know, this is a heavy investment. It's getting that reaver and that shuttle. It will definitely help. And this is a really narrow ramp. Honestly, I think all Aegis has to do is blockade that natural expansion, get his own base up, and just macro, 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 and try to take care of that shuttle if he can keep eyes on it. Right now, he's just got that Zergling, the natural expansion. Some Zerglings kind of looking around. Otherwise, Jedi One still has this probe that could be an X Factor wandering out around this map. And the Overlord, the one thing I do not like from Aegis right now is the Overlord spread as far as the information. I mean, he confirmed that there was no Stargate behind this, but doesn't really have good overlord coverage to see an incoming reaver potentially spines being upgraded some hydralisks are being produced but and it looks like the drone count so this is kind of the make or break moment the probe oh, nice nice little slip in saved himself so spent 33 minerals to save the probe and get behind the, the lines right there the pro the zerglings going to be stuck behind that mineral so now the Reaver and Zealots making their way across. This is a huge investment. But the thing is, is with the lack of scouting and the few amount of Hydralisks, this could do a massive amount of damage because it doesn't look like there's sufficient troops to really fight this off. So Jedi One also could maybe go for this third at the 12 o'clock location behind all of this, assuming there's a lack of Aspire. And that was a big assumption. Potentially going to wipe this out, honestly. The Hydralisks now grouping up to go for a bust. The shield battery's there. So maybe this is next level... Mind games play. Only a single Hydralist to defend. Quick reaction. The drone's attacking. You don't want to attack the Reaver there. Big explosion right there against four. The Zealot continue to do damage. All of the units scrambling back to the main. The Reaver unloading here. Completely disrupting all of the economy now of Aegis. He's not mining. And is down to 19. The Zergling's getting on top of the rest of this. Looks like that Spire still being untouched. Maybe could get things done. But here's the thing. With this, oh, Zergling dying. With this, this shuttle needs to do massive critical damage because this has been a base that has not. This is you're sacri you're doing this at the sacrifice of your natural expansion, basically. But nice micro thus far from Jedi One. Jedi One putting on a clinic, moving back and forth, continuing to disrupt this. Aegis has not capped additional minerals. Looks like that gas is now getting wiped out. This is basically the attack force he wants to try to get it done with. Finally, a Hydralis pinning on that shuttle, but that shuttle exiting a lot of disturbed economy. Looks like that Overlord is now in position to spot that probe and its potential shenanigans. She sees the shuttle moving across. A second Reaver on the front. Jedi One marching across, finding two Hydalisks right here. But So right now, the supply very heavily in Jedi One's favor. And I don't know that Aegis has sufficient defense to stop this attack. And if the shuttle, yeah, it looks like two Reavers regrouping. This Overlord going to get picked off as well. Not sure that's going to be a supply cap, but Aegis... Well, no, it is going to be a supply cap. So now Aegis, this is all of the attack forces he has to defend against all of these Zealots, Dragoons, and these two Reavers. Which I don't know that it's going to be sufficient to pretend... To, to, uh, blah, 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 can't talk all of a sudden. To potentially defend against this. So the Reavers bowling their way up. Reaver shots picking off the Zerglings. And once the Reavers are just heads up against Hydralisks, not good news. Mutalisks are being produced, but this is sufficient amount of Dragoons to pick them off. So Jedi One breaching the natural expansion. Reavers on Hydralisks and plenty. Yeah, and the Mutalisks not able to get damage on the base Reavers due to some nice micro. So Jedi One with some unusual build orders or atypical for the current meta. It's kind of showboating. And I think that's going to be game. So that hatchery's down. The Reavers just going to wander up. They're mu more Mutalisks? No. And Aegis... Oh, going to lose huge amounts if that lands. Doesn't look like it's... Oh, it does land! All of a sudden down to eight drones. And that certainly is going to be match. Dragoons assailing the natural expansion. That shuttle actually eating some damage. But yeah, there's GG. So Jedi won very quickly advancing to the winner's bracket through two very kind of off-meta old-school builds. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.